If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain how I found out about this. It's free. It's on your app store. There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right now from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Please, I urge you, don't waste another minute. I wasted three years. I attended all kinds of events to learn all the steps. I was so confused and it was right here. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Do it now. Good Saturday, February 27, 2021. I'm Sabah Fakuri for the Heart and Home podcast. Early this morning at 2.05 a.m. to be exact, the U.S. House narrowly approved President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief package in a vote of 219 to 212. The measure now moves to the U.S. Senate. The bill includes $1,400 cash payments for many Americans, also included funding to help schools reopen. Kids, are you ready? What safety measures are your schools implementing in Washington State? Wenatchee High School got creative. They're using individual plastic pop-up pods for band and choir students. They're the same being used by restaurants for outdoor dining during COVID-19, only smaller and bright green. Well, we're nearly to the end of Black History Month, and here's what I've learned this year about our national holiday. As I sit here listening to the Queen of Soul, the late Aretha Franklin, my hometown gal in Detroit, Michigan, I'm disappointed at the lack of R-E-S-P-E-C-T African Americans have received in our country's tragic history that captured, enslaved, bought, and sold into slavery and for having to continuously fight against racism and police brutality. And God knows what else they face each day, whether here in America or in other countries around the world. Just this morning, we learned that 317 girls from a government girls' junior secondary school were abducted at gunpoint from the boarding school in Janjibi in northern Nigeria. This isn't the first time this has happened. This is only the latest in a series of mass kidnappings of students in that West African nation. My heart goes out to those girls and their families. Coverage of stories like that are what we normally hear about. But the day-to-day goings-on in that country and many other foreign nations are ignored by what we call in the journalism industry as gatekeepers. Those are editors who decide what you see, what you hear, and ultimately what you think. Negative portrayals in the media are damaging to the psyches of children and to adults who consume such unbalanced coverage of certain portions of the population. Now, add to that our tragic American history that saw black people bought and sold into slavery and our current day issues of Black Lives Matter, continuing to fight against everyday racism and urgent issues like police brutality due to a rash of killings that continue across this nation. And to add further fuel to the fire and insult to injury, sometimes 
the police involved aren't charged, as occurred earlier this week in Daniel Prude's death in New York. As a footnote, about three weeks ago, the Black Lives Matter movement was nominated by a Norwegian member of parliament for a 2021 Nobel Peace Prize uh, for the group's estimated 20 million protesters fighting for racial justice in this country. Now, the movement is not only in the U.S., it has spread in Europe and in Asia, and the Nobel Peace Prize was awarded to Martin Luther King Jr. in 1964 and in 1993 to Nelson Mandela. So it is a possibility. The last year, Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation won Sweden's Olaf Palmy Human Rights Prize in 2020. Certain portions of our population have carried around a heavy ball and chain. While it began more than 500 years ago, the story of the colonizers capturing human beings, disrupting and displacing innocent souls from their beloved African nation and brought here against their will and enslaved by wealthy landowners. But almost all of us know that old story. Today, it's the Nigerian girls being abducted. Elsewhere, other groups and nationalities are migrating to safety due to unsafe conditions in their land, whether from the African continent or the war-torn Arab world and as close as South and Central America. Regardless of where immigrants originate, their reception is not always welcomed by all in their new land. Here in the United States, we have our own demons to con contend with because the mistreatment of child migrants and caravans of immigrants trying to cross from the southern border. I want to share a personal story about my own grandfather, my mother's father, who ran away from his village in the Baqa Valley of Greater Syria, which is now known as Lebanon. At the age of 14, because he was starving from the war. He boarded a freighter in the early 1900s, and when he arrived at Ellis Island in New York, he jumped ship to evade immigration, according to my uncle's story. Now, I have heard of other foreigners doing the same thing because our government wasn't as welcoming during certain portions of our history and had closed the gates to non-Europeans. Other misconceptions often portrayed in the American press, including National Geographic, who admitted to publishing racist images for years, is that African Americans are drug addicts, born out of wedlock, raised by single moms, live on government assistance, are slow, well, you get the picture, all negative images that don't reflect who all African Americans are. The same is true of other minority groups, such as Arabs, Muslims, Japanese, and other Asian descendants who have also been singled out as the other. And most recently, the Hispanic and other immigrants dying to make a better life for themselves and their children. Now, I hope you don't think this is a repeat of last season's Heart and Home episode 43, where I covered American Dirt on March 6, 2020. That book received a lot of criticism by many authors for a number of reasons, most importantly, for what some authors felt was racist. They didn't feel the author of the book, Janine Cummings, was worthy to tell the story of a woman fleeing the drug cartel with her eight-year-old son, because she herself was not an immigrant, although her grandmother was. Cummins' book tour was then canceled, her publisher tried to dis distance from her, and this was all after criticism for her getting six figures for her story. I mean, there was a bidding war, and she spent 
five years researching that story before her book came out. Now, of course, the story was fiction, and it was sprinkled in with some truths because she did interview a lot of people, and so she did know some of what people went through as she tried to follow the trail of what and you know an immigrant might uh might take oh the book was a page turner i'll tell you i can remember going back and and reading that book it was right when covid hit and i said okay now i'm going to catch up on all my reading i just can't wait and that was one of the first books that i pulled out uh even before uh, reading Michelle Obama's Becoming, and it was a page turner. I, I, I won't lie. But whatever the criticism, Janine Cummins struck a nerve. Her portrayal of immigrants dying to get to the Mexican border was so powerful that Oprah chose it for her book club and held a special interview with Janine to face her critics. The author responded that she didn't write the book for other authors. She wrote it for her readers. Oh. Remember the media firestorm that erupted after former U.S. President Trump said immigrants were coming from, quote, shit countries? The media jumped on those words. I don't know what Trump was trying to say. The facts are what's relatable. People are escaping unfavorable conditions, whether due to corrupt governments, drug wars, uh, you know, famine, lack of water, jobs, freedom of worship, on and on and on. Trump's choice of words may not have been the most diplomatic, but everyone knows Trump's a wizard at garnering media attention, something he learned long before winning the White House. Perceptions in the media affect certain ethnic groups disproportionately. It's rooted in the perception of the other, which comes from the 19th century Orientalism. It's still with us today. It's reflected in both the media and in movies. Now, in the major American media, who do we see representing African Americans besides the usual? Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Oprah, and her bestie, Gail King, Michael Jordan, the late Kobe Bryant, God rest his soul, Venus and her sister, Serena Williams, Tiger Woods, our thoughts are with him after He broke his leg in several places and was involved in a rollover accident this week. Uh, Jay-Z and his gorgeous wife, Beyonce, Kanye West, Meghan Markle, Felicia Rashad, Halle Berry, Susan and Condoleezza Rice, Stacey Abrams, the former president and first lady, Barack and Michelle Obama, and the current vice president, Kamala Harris. Unless you subscribe to Black-owned media, you might not hear of the accomplishments of many other talented entrepreneurs, artists, authors, and even poet laureates. For example, that Amanda Gorman at the presidential inauguration stole the show. People around the world connected with her words, her poise, her courage, her accomplishments, at such a young age. And she even got a book deal that's coming out in March as well. But there's more like her that we don't hear about. And who knows how many more bright lights are among our communities that just need a kind smile, a little help, encouraging words that might give them the confidence to pursue their dreams instead of worrying about making ends meet, accepting low-paying jobs, just to put food on the table. If they felt better about themselves, perhaps they wouldn't need to hit the bottle or smoke a doobie to numb their pain. Now, I'm not saying that 
all of them do this. But you see, those problems in our society are not only in the African-American communities. They're even here in this small town, the hometown of Henry Ford, who put the world on wheels, as we say in Detroit, where Muslim kids are among those hooked on drugs and make up a portion of the numbers affected by the opioid epidemic. Homelessness, hunger, poverty cut across all lines. So yes, it is racist to apply labels to an entire group of people. And that's why I'm looking deeper into why we devote 28 to 29 days annually to celebrate Black History Month. Now, every February, besides celebrating Valentine's Day, our nation shows respect and recognition for the hardworking and sacrifice made by African Americans. But who are these African Americans? In a 2016 speech, President Barack Obama put it eloquently about the holiday. Quote, Black History Month shouldn't be treated as though it is somehow separate from our collective American history or somehow just boiled down to a compilation of greatest hits from the March on Washington or from some of our sports heroes. It's about the lived, shared experience of all African Americans, high and low, famous and obscure, and how those experiences have shaped and challenged and ultimately strengthened America. It's about taking an unvarnished look at the past so we can create a better future. It's a reminder of where we as a country have been so that we know where we need to go. End of quote. Well, he said it. Sports figures and movie stars are only one part of the African-American society. Yet, the past continues to repeat itself. For generations, African-Americans have tried to remain strong and keep their faith. And throughout their painful past, many continue to make cultural contributions despite being recognized. But in reality, There's lots to celebrate. First, how did this holiday begin? The idea was first conceived in 1915 by Harvard-educated historian Carter G. Woodson after he attended a celebration for the 50th anniversary of the Third Amendment. It was in 1863 during Abraham Lincoln's presidency who... I know you must have heard my previous episode. He was a slave owner before he did free them. Um, When the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in the Confederate states that seceded from the United States, that included Mississippi, Florida, South Carolina, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas, Virginia, North Carolina, and Tennessee. Two years later, on June 19 in 1865, all people held as property in the United States were officially freed. Thus, Juneteenth was born. And remember, even though this law passed, not everybody was told about it. Tomorrow, on Hard and Home, we can see, continue to celebrate African Americans featured by Google in their BookTube community, including one of the founders of the Black Lives Matter movement. Keeping African American dramas on American TV after the 1990s success and long running sitcom Family Manners, and booming. Black-led sitcoms from Moesha to Sister, Sister. We'll also talk about the redefining of the on-screen stories of strong African-American women and who broke the mold for African-American characters on TV. We'll also be celebrating the life of Cicely Tyson. 
On Monday, Heart and Home will look at the launching of Black News Channel in March. Then next week, Heart and Home will explore why a large portion of African Americans distrust the government and the COVID-19 vaccination and don't think they're safe. For the Heart and Home Podcast, I'm Sabafa Curry.